Coming up on today's Airborne, the FAA streamlined certification for AOA indicators. Aspen testifies before a congressional committee. And the crew dons oxygen mask on a Justin Bieber charter flight. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The FAA has taken an important step to help improve safety in small aircraft by simplifying design approval requirements for angle of attack indicators. Under the new policy, manufacturers must build the AOA indicator system according to standards from the American Society for Testing and Materials and apply for FAA approval for the design via a letter certifying that the equipment meets ASTM standards and production quality is assured. This new policy is a significant step forward in streamlining the certification process of appliances installed on type certificated aircraft. Even more encouraging is that the FAA said it believes the streamlined policy may serve as a prototype for production approval and installation of other add-on aircraft systems in the future. The U.S. House Small Business Committee held a hearing on Wednesday to examine how FAA policies affect small general aviation businesses. John Uzakai, President and CEO of Aspen Avionics, testified on behalf of Aspen Avionics and the General Aviation Manufacturers Association. Aspen Avionics has its systems installed in more than 6,000 general aviation aircraft worldwide. Despite this success, the company has faced some challenges in working with the FAA to bring new safety-enhancing products to the market. Uzakai said, quote, To be successful, businesses, and in particular small businesses, need to clearly understand the task and be able to expect the FAA to respond in a timely fashion." End quote. Uzakai called on the agency to make more consistent use of the Designated Engineering Representative Program. This program allows the agency to leverage the expertise of companies such as Aspen on certification of tasks. In addition, Uzakai called on Congress to work in a bipartisan fashion to focus on helping small aviation-related businesses. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop us an email to news-by at aero-news.net. When there's smoke in an airplane's cockpit, it's a serious event. In this case of a jet charter flight from Canada, the pilots followed the appropriate procedures and donned their oxygen mask. However, according to a report on CNN, this event was different from your typical in-flight emergency. The charter flight was carrying pop star Justin Bieber, his father, and an entourage of about 10 people. The source of the smoke is alleged to have been marijuana. An unnamed source reported that the marijuana smoke was so strong in the jet's cabin that flight crew members put on oxygen masks because they were concerned that they might inhale so much it would cause them to test positive for drug use. It's reported that when the pilots repeatedly asked the passengers to put the marijuana away during the flight, that the singer and his father were verbally abusive to the cockpit and cabin crew. Bieber and his entourage were granted re-entry into the United States after a search of the chartered plane by federal officials. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN's editor-in-chief 
to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim says, I want an electric ultralight. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, we've been looking quite a bit at what it's going to take to jumpstart certain aspects of aviation, and we've said over and over again that the entry level to aviation cannot be ignored. And in fact, there is some history, if you go back to the late 70s and early 80s, of a revolution that came and went and, well, didn't quite totally disappear, but a lot of it did. And that was the ultralight revolution. Very simple flying machines, exciting flying machines, fun flying machines, cheap flying machines. Machines that provided an incredible amount of freedom that were outside of the FAA licensing realm by and large, with the exception of Part 103. It was an exciting time. And I think there is a new ultralight revolution in the offing. I think there's better materials, better manufacturers, better technologies, better everything. I think the ultralights of tomorrow could be really exceptional flyers. And I hope this industry would learn from the lessons of the past, the bad business, the hype, the nonsense, the rule breaking, to enact and empower a new generation of uh, ultralight flying machines to be the best things that they've ever produced. I also have to tell you that I know of many people flying heavy iron now, whether it be Cessnas to Boeings, who started with ultralights, got infected with the freedom of flight. But how do we take something really modern? How do we make it more exciting? How do we take a beautiful, simple flying concept and make it even more exciting than it's been? And the simple answer is this, electric ultralights. We are seeing electric technology make leaps and bounds. The motors are there, the controllers are there, the batteries aren't quite there. But we have great hopes, and we think within the next year or two, there's going to be a number of solutions that could make the electric ultralight not only affordable, but practical. In the meantime, there are a number of electric motor gliders in the works where the engines will either be sustainers or help in certain takeoff functions. We need to be looking at new and creative ideas. That's the whole concept behind aviation and aviation innovation, as we've been talking about forever and a day. But an electric ultralight, something really exciting, really new, really ecologically uh, sound, that could be just the thing. Think about it. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Lance Air International has decided on the dates and location for its 30th annual fly-in. In a news release, the company said that the event will be a homecoming back to Redmond, Oregon, where the fly-in originally started. The event will be held at Eagle Creek Resort in Redmond on August 29th through the 31st. The two-day schedule currently being planned will include forums, hands-on demonstrations, and vendor displays. They are also planning optional field trips to enjoy the local highlights, to dine, and activities for ladies. Event coordinator Lisa M. Williams said, quote, If you're a Lance Air enthusiast, don't miss this opportunity to help Lance Air International celebrate their achievement of 30 years of continuous service to the world's best personal flying machines, end quote. We'll be right back with more news. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, you can drop Jim an email to jim at aero-news.net. Two aviation professionals have submitted a petition to the FAA for a change in one of its signature safety programs. Tom Patton reports. The two are Robert A. Wright, president of Wright Aviation Solutions, and Kent Ewing, president of Bonanza Baron Pilot Training. And they've joined together to file a petition with the FAA to modify its WINGS program. 
They've named their proposed program change the ProWings program, which would recognize that pilots who stay current at a consistent level of flying tend to retain their pilot skills better than pilots who fly less often. The existing WINGS program may be used to substitute for a flight review. However, the WINGS program requires pilots to receive three hours of dual instruction annually if their participation is to be counted as a flight review. The petition proposes that pilots with a high level of recent experience could substitute the three hours of dual instruction for a single instructional flight every two years. Under the proposed Pro Wings program, this instruction would be scenario-based and highly tailored towards aeronautical decision-making skills. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Fasten your seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy ride. But not if Rockwell Collins has anything to do with it. The company has unveiled their new multi-scan threat track weather radar which provides new atmospheric threat assessment capabilities for air transport aircraft. Multi-scan threat track provides advanced capabilities that go beyond hail and lightning prediction within a thunderstorm cell. It also alerts pilots to these threats adjacent to the cell. If these thunderstorms are growing ahead and below the aircraft, threat tracks predictive overflight protection warns the flight crew if the cell will be in the aircraft's path. In addition, Multiscan Threat Track is the first in the industry to feature two levels of turbulence detection, severe and ride quality, which more accurately informs flight crews of the type of turbulence in their path. American Airlines is debuting the new radar on its new next generation Boeing 737 fleet. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real time, 24 7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.